You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Well, welcome to This House of Books. We have with us today, Timothy Long and Julia Kruger uh, from uh, McKenzie Art Gallery in Regina. And uh, they have a book that is a finalist in the High Plains Book Awards contest. Uh, its title is Victor Sikansky, The Gardener's Universe. And I'd like to talk about that um, in a moment, maybe first of all, uh, both of you could tell us a little about yourselves. Um, Timothy, how about you? Yeah, my I've been uh, the head curator at the McKenzie Art Gallery for a number of years. Uh, I'm originally from Regina, uh, did some studies down at uh, State University of New York. Um, but uh, I've, I've really grown to appreciate uh, the artists of this region. And uh, Victor Sikansky has been uh, an inspiration for me uh, for the last couple of decades. So it was a, a real pleasure for a chance to, to have a chance to work with him and to produce this publication. Wonderful. Julia, how about you? Um, I'm also uh, born and raised in Regina, Saskatchewan, and I studied in Ottawa and Calgary. And I currently live in Calgary, but I'm transitioning back to Saskatchewan uh, as we speak. And uh, I have very fond memories of seeing Victor Sikansky's work um, as a child. And I actually credit him as one of the uh, driving factors for going into studying craft and uh, art from Saskatchewan, which is what I did in my art history studies. And so I'm also, it was just such a pleasure to be invited to come and study him and write about him for this project with Timothy. Wonderful. Well, let's, let's go ahead and talk about the book a little bit. Um, I, as I was looking into this, uh, getting ready for this talk, I uh, logged onto your gallery's website and saw an exhibition that you mounted. And I just ha I have to say, the, uh, <clears throat> the work really struck me it's so lively. It's, it's just, I'm very excited to, to hear about it. Um, but tell us about the book. Where did the book come from? Maybe, uh, again, Timothy? Scratch here. So uh, the book comes from an exhibition which we uh, organized at the McKenzie Art Gallery, which uh, Julie and I co-curated. And it uh, tells us, the book tells the story of uh, Victor Sikansky's journey as an artist. Uh, he grew up in Regina, uh, the son of Romanian immigrants, uh, very humble origins. Uh, but after studies here in Regina, uh, he went to the uh, 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 UC Davis, uh, where he studied under the great funk artist Bob Arneson, and came back to Regina fired up with uh, all sorts of enthusiasm for funk art, for clay, uh, but also he had been exposed to the, the, the counterculture uh, that was emerging in Davis at the time, the Whole Earth Festival, and he realized that his experience in the garden with his Romanian grandmother had uh, everything to do with what, uh, what was going on in the environmental movement, the back to the land uh, movement that he ex was exposed to in Calgary. And that really propelled his art. So that's the story we wanted to capture uh, through this book. Wonderful. How about and you? I think I'd like to add to that, one of the other things we wanted to do was to bring in a variety of different voices who hadn't addressed his work before. So we were really lucky to get um, a couple of great authors on board, such as Alison Calder, who examined his work in relation to prairie literature and poetry. Um, and then we had uh, Garth Johnson, uh, who's a curator down in New York, write about his work in relation to avant-garde ceramic practices in the 1970s that were actually happening down in California, and then how Victor um, prairie aesthetic and prairie mindset related to some of those avant-garde practices. So those were those are just some of the avenues that we took that really hadn't been explored before. So we've really broadened the story of Victor with this book. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask: Is is Victor still living? Yes. 
Oh, oh yeah, Victor's very much uh, alive and well and uh, in his garden. Uh, he's, uh, he's got the most amazing uh, backyard garden. Uh, both Julie and I have enjoyed uh, several hours back there. And the book has some, some, some absolutely stunning photographs of that garden. Uh, by uh, local photographer Gary Robbins. Uh, the book is very lavishly illustrated and uh, and really brings you into Victor's world. And I'd have to say Trevor Harriet's essay um, really talks about the garden and contextualizes this, uh, you know, prairie oasis, urban prairie oasis uh, within Victor's practice and within his life. So he almost like when you read that essay, he walks you through his garden which is really beautiful and then like Timothy said it's lavishly illustrated with these beautiful uh, photographs of the garden. Your, your website has a has a lovely little video that I just watched uh, that shows a fair amount of the garden as well as his artwork and I, I'm going to recommend that for everybody I think it's just terrific. So, well let's talk briefly about the audience who 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 would be the target audience for this book? Who would like it? Well, I, I'd say it's anybody who loves gardens, the environment, and art. Uh, sum it up in those three words. Uh, it's, it's a book that uh, uh, is, it's, tells a, an interesting story from art history, our art art history here on the High Plains. Uh, but it, it's also, I think, very accessible. And uh, for anybody who just who, who enjoys uh, a tactile experience of of the world. Um, the the he's a he's an artist who translates his ideas into clay, into bronze, um, and I can sum it all up in a jar of pickles. Um, he's he's famous for making these mason jars out of ceramics, uh, and the preserves um, you know range from the pickles, uh, pickled beets, uh, um, you know very different kinds of fruits and vegetables, but uh, they, they, when you look at the book, you just want to pick one up and hold it in your hands. Uh, so for, for, for anybody who's really uh, loves the, 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 the tactile elements of the garden, this book is, uh, I think, would be a real pleasure. Great. And, yeah, I completely agree with Timothy. I think that is our, our target audience. Um, and, and again, I think because of some of the really great uh, photographs that we have in the book, as well as the authors, it's also can be useful for an academic audience um, because it's bringing some new perspectives and criticality to both Victor's work and then the broader ceramic activity within Saskatchewan. I, I just love the photographs of, of the work that I'm seeing. It just, it, it's so alive and and rich and uh, it, it betrays a great sense of humor as well as just humanity. Was, he, he looks like just a wonderful artist. Julie, I'm gonna ask you a little bit. You're, um, you're actually curator and craft historian. And I'm wondering um, if you could explain to us, what's the difference between uh, art and craft? <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> um, there's a number of ways to answer that question. Um, but um, I think that one of the things that I'm really interested in, in terms of when I take a craft perspective to something, or a maker takes a craft perspective to making, is a, a concerted concentration or study of material and process. That's really one of the things I think that's really important to craft. Um, and you see that throughout Victor's um, career and we highlight it in the book as well. So it's that idea of he was very much interested in, in terms of material, in terms of ceramics, wood, and then bronze. And then in terms of process, he's very interested in labor. Um, so making hand making things with your hand which translates to the garden as well right so like you're you're making you're toiling there's that idea of crafting the garden um, that carries out throughout his career so I don't necessarily see craft and art as two binaries that fight against each other instead it's perspectives that you can take to looking at p objects that then um, 
allow you to see them in a different way. And I think that's what um, it, you know I did with this project. So that's what I would say um, are some of the differences between them. And Victor is really interesting because he actually sits on that 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 boundary and he troubles it and makes you question like, wait a second, maybe those bronze sculptures could actually be craft in a way, especially the functional ones like the tables, right? Um, and so it, it helps, I think me especially to see that there isn't that binary opposition and that the two art and craft uh, concepts can actually overlap and complement each other. Okay, so if I'm catching this right, the craft has an emphasis on materials and and um, processes for creating it. But then what makes something art after that? Well, <laughs> I, I can say the flippant thing that everything is art and if it gets in an art gallery, it's art, right? <laughs> but. <laughs> Um, uh, I, and I do think that is some of it. It is a perspective um, thing, right? That it is, you know, you can have a number of different things that are considered art and the same with craft. But again, I think for me, especially, it is about this, in, this sustained engagement with materiality. Um, where maybe somebody who has more of an art based practice would engage with ceramics for one project and then maybe move over to painting for another project. Whereas someone like Victor, has for his entire career used ceramics and continues to use it. So he's very much a ceramist because that's that's sort of almost a starting point for the things that he makes. Timothy, do you want to add anything? Well, yeah, it's I, I, Julia does this great analysis of a ball cap that Victor made out of clay um, while he was at UC Davis and. The thing is, is that if somebody wants to make a ball cap out of clay, you could just take a piece of a lump of clay and sort of carve it or shape it into the, like, like the ball cap you're wearing. But what Victor did was he cut out the pieces of clay like he would cut out the pattern of a fabric ball cap and assembled them. And that's what, what, what Julie's talking about with process. He's always thinking about how things are made. and. Uh, it, you know, the, the end product isn't really functional, so, you know, it has to be art, but on the other hand, it's, it tells you everything about what, a, how, about the making of a ball cap. If, if I can jump in, I do have a kind of a theory about this. Uh, my, my working theory of art is that it's any object or image that's been expelled from the real world, from the, the continuum of lived experience, through a framing activity. And that frame expels it into that other world. And it comes back sort of like the dying God it, raised from the dead. It comes back with uh, a kind of a living presence, which we call the aesthetic. That's for me the working definition of artwork. What's so interesting about craft is that the objects never, the, a craft object is never intended to have that frame that we call art around it. Uh, we tend to put it, you know, because we, you know, there's a value attached to art. We, we, we start putting craft objects on plinths and calling them art, or, or we, or we uh, you know, uh, we, we can frame it and put it on a wall. You know, we could take a plate and hang it like it's a painting, but they were never intended to have that frame. What's so interesting about artists like Sikansky and I could talk about some others like Jack Sears here in Regina who also they trouble that that uh, journey from this world into the next and then back by by making objects that play with the framing of art um, like his tables uh, these beautiful tables that you know are, are he makes them out of wood and then he fires you know, through a lost wood practice changes them into bronze but, you know, and they're, they're functional, but they're also, you know, these, this other world that you look down on through the glass tops. So they, they, they straddle this, this mysterious, these two realms. And uh, I think that's what makes uh, an artist like Victor uh, endlessly interesting because he's, he's asking these basic questions about art and craft, uh, but also about our relationship to nature and, uh, 
um, you know, uh, how, how, how objects function socially, uh, and how they can bring us together and also bring us closer to the earth. Uh, those are all, you know, they're big questions, but they're asked in a very pragmatic and, and down to earth way. And they relate so much to the domestic, a number of Victor yeah. Stakansky's pieces, like the tables, but also um, one of the really interesting things that Timothy noticed when we were visiting collections was those ceramic jars that we were talking about, the preserved jars. So often, people who collect those put them in the kitchens where they would actually have the real preserves. Like there's this idea that that, that straddling of the two worlds becomes even more complicated. Yeah, and again, I think what's interesting to come back to that idea of like you looked at the pieces in the art gallery. Well, with Victor's tables, you're actually sitting with them and using them at times, which, which adds that that's that sort of idea of craft. Craft doesn't always have to be utilitarian necessarily, but it does have that aspect to it, right? So you can use um, his tables in various ways, whether it's, you know, you're sitting down you know, next to it and you're looking through it and seeing your legs underneath a dining table or something like that as well. So that I think aligns some of his pieces with craft as well. Yeah, and like he make a, he'll make a bowl with uh, old bronze, well like they're potatoes, like the, the, but they're old potatoes that are sprouting and they're made out of bronze, but you could put a real potato right beside it and it would feel right at home. Yeah. Well, this is fantastic. I, I, uh, I've got to say I'm really looking forward to the book and, and, and being able to, to dig into that. Uh, he sounds like a wonderful artist and, and I, I really appreciate the uh, effort you put into bringing him forward. Thanks. So. Thank, well, thanks for inviting us to talk today. Yes, thank you so much. I, it's an honor. <laughs> so on now. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.